Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Larry XSEA Show. I'm back in the house. Hey, man, I've enjoyed this. Thank you guys for checking up on your boy. I got some wonderful email, text messages about last week and the election and and all of that good stuff. And, you know, I just really want to thank you guys. Our numbers at this station is doing really, really well, and we could not do it without you. I just want to thank everybody for helping us and, you know, helping us keep this show alive and that is, uh, you know, it's very important. You know, you guys keeping your boy on the air. I, yeah, I kind of like you for that, huh? Uh, anyway, I know some of you are still kind of a little bit sad after the election and, uh, you know, we're going through. And there are some of you that's getting buyer's remorse. I told you, I told you it was going to get buyer's remorse on that. You haven't seen nothing yet. You got to buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. But I will say to... All of my family members out there, and I may have been a little bit tough on my European-American uh, friends that went on and voted for Trump because you guys put him in office, and you know I tell it like it is. I'm not calling you right or wrong, but that's just how it is. White women put him in office. You guys had an opportunity, and you know I end this show every week. Nation can rise no higher than we elevate the woman, and you guys did not come through. You put this misogynist, this racist, and this person is going to go after your rights. I was having this conversation, and uh, my guest today has nothing to do with uh, what I'm saying. You know, you guys know that I just tell it like I see it, and it doesn't make me right or wrong, but I, you know, I got the numbers to back me up, so you do the math to make me wrong, and then guess what? We can we can all ride together. Um but one one of the things I, I, I want I want to say is that we are in some serious times. We are in some very serious times. The war, the world is was already a little bit, not a little bit. The world is already in turmoil, and then you have all of these people that is so full of hate and so full of anger um, that is now in power because you put him there. And let me say something to you lovely white community and white women. You are the most powerful group of people in America, if not second to white males. You're actually more powerful than that because we all know the, the, the power of black women in the community. We know the power of the Asian woman or not power in the, in the Hispanic community. But all of these women have strived to be like white women. Not all. I know some of them don't. Send me no email. You know what I mean when I say all. Many of us, many of the women, uh, from the looks, uh, from the power of the finances and the education, and white women in America is the most power was I say still is the most powerful group of women of people on planet Earth because of your connections and education, your connection and family. And and I had someone that doubted that, and I said to them, if you doubt the power that white women have in America and giving it up now, this is why I'm saying this because you're giving it up. You're giving your power away that most people on the planet 
prayed to get the power that white women in America have. And I'm not playing when I say that. You can go, Larry going to walk you through it just in case you doubt it. If I, as a black male, go out and violate a black woman, a Hispanic woman, or a Muslim woman, or an Asian woman, I get a slap on the wrist, perhaps a little bit probation and a little bit of hurt. If I go out and violate a white woman, I might do life. That's power. But you didn't see that as power. You know, you can't, white women have the power to bring down corporation and build the cor corporation back up because you had the power and you gave it away to this. Uh, and you got to sit back and think about that. So what I'm going to do is, this is a powerful group of young people here today. And I'm not attaching them to the conversation that I'm having right now. So I'm going to switch it just a little bit so you know that, and I don't want you to ta attach my frustration with my American sisters out there uh, with what we're about to talk about today. Because the, the, the world and the violence and people that is trying to find a way to bring about peace in this world. And now we have a group of young people here today that's not just talking about it. They're not just talking about what we should do to come together. We have young people here today that has shown that it can be done. And, and I think, I can't speak for them, but so often I say to my families out here that the dollar is more powerful than a bullet. But sometimes the camera is more powerful than the bomb. And we have some people here that has used the camera and their words and their action to replace the bomb, to replace the gun, to replace the suicide bombing and come together with love and understanding of, the, of, of, of everybody's side of the story and not just one side of the story. So I'm going to let them speak for themselves because the reason I'm cutting this short because I want them to have as much of this hour as they can get because this is so important. And, and then I'll come back after Thanksgiving and rattle off a little bit, little bit more. But I think for me personally, this tie in so much of what is going on in the world, what is needed in this world. And the name of this film is that uh, these young people involved with is Disturbing the Peace. And we're going to show you a little clip of it. I think, Jarvis, we have a clip of what we're going to be showing. We're going to show you a five second clip of this. And it's just, we, we want, we got to, we don't have a choice. This is the type of things we must support. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce uh, Mas Masina. Marcina. Yeah. Marcina. Thank you for, let me get some applause here. Thank you for joining us on the Larry Ixx's show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. How, how are you doing today? I, I, I told Marcina that, that I'm going to make her my um, co-host, and she didn't know that. You know? I love but, uh, Tell us, uh, and I want you to introduce. Uh, I'm gonna start out with Solomon. So did I did I get it right? Suleiman. 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 They call me Suleiman. Okay, That's Suleiman. Easier for you. So uh, thank you guys for coming thank here, you. and forgive me if I I'm from Mississippi. So I, if I mess up your name, I got an excuse. I'm not from this country. I'm from the south. <laughs> uh, so uh, w would you tell us what the film is about and how you got involved? Well, the film is Disturbing the Peace, and um, I'm the producer. Steve Apcon is the director and producer, and Andy Young is one of the other directors, co-director with it. And the way the film began was that uh, Steve was asked to go over to Israel-Palestine uh, with the idea of finding anything new over there that he could actually bring as a story of, of what was happening or a solution and so forth. In the meantime, I was, we, uh, Steve and myself had been starting a company called Reconsider, Mm. And in Reconsider, we ask two main questions. It's what kind of world do we want to live in? Mm -hmm. And what kind of life do you want to create? Wow. And so when he met with combatants, he met with a lot of different groups over in Israel-Palestine. When he met with them, they had a very unique perspective on what was going on there. And they also had a credibility that very few of the organizations really have at that level because both of them are former combatants. So they've been coming from the world of violence. 
Now, and let me ask you something. For the, for the sake of the audience, explain combatants to those that may not have it in perspective. Uh, thanks for having us here. Uh, well, Combatants for Peace is a, 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 a binational Israeli-Palestinian uh, group uh, that founded by ex-combatants from both sides. Israelis as uh, ex-officers and the Israeli army, Palestinians like myself, ex-fighters that were in jail also, served in jail. Like myself, I served 10 years in jail, in Israeli jail. And we so you're saying Israeli soldiers and Palestinians, uh, and those of you that you you yourself was in jail as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, we came together uh, to uh, uh, create and find a new path that based on uh, mutual respect and nonviolence is a main principle for us to create a new alternative uh, narrative for our struggle for freedom and for change. And since the, this was 10 years ago, since mm. then we had more uh, hundreds of members and activists from both sides that join our nonviolent struggle movement, uh, which is not all of them actually like f physically combatants. Uh, it's open for uh, everybody that agreed with our main uh, moral value uh, principles. So if I'm hearing you correctly, that many of them was not on the battlefield, so to speak, but they're still welcome into the fold and moving the message forward. Of Did course. I hear you correctly? Of course. We, we believe, you know, most of our, like, our people that live between the river to the sea, Israelis and Palestinians, are affected by the ongoing conflict there since decades in one way or another, directly and indirectly. So everybody contribute. I, I was listening to you talking about the election here, and uh, uh, I'm not American, so I also don't have the maybe uh, something to say, except uh, that everybody is responsible for what's happening uh, and for our own uh, creation, what Marcina said, and our own uh, uh, action or the action that does happened in our name. Well, you know, I, I tell you something, Solomon. Uh, I think you stated it beautiful that you're not an American, so maybe you don't have anything to say. And I say, no, that's not true, because this is about a global thing. And I appreciate your your words on that, because um, this is, as you say, everybody's responsible for the out, uh, how, what happened here. We all played a part in the, this, this, this wave that is that's going to strike around the globe. globe. I mean, it's not just it America. Is, yeah. it's, it's, it's striking around the globe. Mm -hmm. And so we've been so, uh, we're so quick to say, well, you're Palestinian, so what do you have to say about America? No, you have something to say. That's why you're here on the Larry X's Ears show, <laughs> yeah, yeah. speaking to an American and global <laughs> group. But uh, you you wanted to say something, uh, finish a little bit more about, about that. the film mm -hmm. sure so the what the what um disturbing the peace really looks at is the narratives that we're all stuck in and a lot of times what we do is it's a, it's a we're, we're we are able to find the blame in the other person and so what the film does is it takes a position it actually doesn't have a villain in it mm. we were wondering actually if you don't have a villain in the film is it still interesting but we realized that the villain and people try to find the villain in different places, is actually the narrative itself. It's what keeps us all stuck in the constant cycle of violence and also the difficulties of what it takes to get out of it. And so the film itself is named, it's called Disturbing the Peace. And the reason why it's called that is that they, these guys every month hold a march and they use puppets and nonviolent demonstrations. Do you want to talk about that for a yeah. minute? Yeah, this is really one of uh, the things I want to highlight here that our joint nonviolent struggle is, you can see it in many faces what that we do, uh, but one of the main uh, activities and going activities uh, that we do is uh, the Freedom March. And actually connected to America, back to the US, you know, we steal the name from, you know, like the Freedom Marches that used to happen during Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. that we, you know, grew up like, and that's one of the, uh, reasons that be, uh, people like myself and uh, my colleagues in combatants for peace and other groups that uh, believe in nonviolence out of the, of his 
experience and the experience that happened back into into the U.S. And actually now after the election, I would say uh, that we might need to share this freedom march to go with you guys here because <laughs> yeah. you need it now. <laughs> yeah. So we do this every month, the first Friday of every month, uh, in a space where Israelis and Palestinians can walk together in peace and demand peaceful solution and well, better solutions. As you do the Freedom March with Palestinians and Israelis, and I think you tied it in beautifully when you said that maybe we need to join us here after the Martin Luther King, because that is one of the ways, one of the things that got me uh, the freedom to sit here mm-hmm. behind this microphone yeah. now because of the, the Freedom March and then to see you as a Palestinian young man that taking a piece from that history and using it in Israel where Israeli uh, young people and Palestinian young people can come together mm-hmm. and march f- on, uh, you know, to the same rhythm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so I, I, I applaud, you, applaud you for that. I, you, I, I really want to know more about this. But tell me a little bit more, uh, continue a little bit more about so this. So Disturbing the Peace Sun, what, what the name began because during those marches, and when it ended, and they used, like I said, there's, there's families there, there's puppets there from Bread and Puppet, amazing puppets. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the march, two of them were arrested, and they are often arrested at, at these kinds of events. And they're arrested for Disturbing the Peace. And mm-hmm. so we kept that as our running title. But as time went on, we realized that disturbing peace actually is something that has been used in our history to change the status quo throughout our times. Yeah. And it is actually something that has a very defined kind of process to it as well. What made you so passionate about this? Uh, for me, I've always believed that we could live this life in a very different way. I, I have to tell you, when I, I, I met a young lady briefly out there, your spirit is absolutely wonderful. And well, I just appreciate you. you bringing that kind of energy to, to, the, to the table. Did What you grew up, what, what's in your background and your childhood that got you to this point? When you look back at the little girl. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> tell me about the little girl that became the filmmaker. No, you're, talking just about, <laughs> you're talking about a five-year-old to believe that we didn't have to do it this way and never could understand why we're doing what we're doing. And so then, when I, you know, as I grew up, I think of me, like many of us uh, who experience that, there's a lot of shutdown. And we actually make our voice very small. And I, to tell you the truth, was very... Happy to be at home in my own little world. Mm. But I realized something with what's going on today is that the voice of, and I, I wanted to separate too, the difference between anger and hate. Okay, okay, please. The voice of hate is a lot louder right now. Okay? Anger is when you don't get your way. But often what you're angry about is usually something that we desire, and a lot of it comes from love. And so there is a way of being very angry and having it be very powerful, but not coming from hate. And I think some of our biggest distributors of the peace, like Martin Luther King and Gandhi and Rosa Parks, used anger to motivate them to change the status quo. But they didn't use hate. That was very beautiful. And not put. violence. That was very beautifully put. And, and mm-hmm. in fact, uh, as a young boy, I went through a lot of that. And my generation was part of the generation that that I saw that, you know, firsthand. And mm-hmm. um I know about racial and hatred killings. I have personal friends that died because of hate crimes and right. um, racial hate crimes. And there were, and there were, by it being in Mississippi, mm-hmm. it was nothing done. And so the killings and the burnings and the torture that we we experienced in our community. It, so you grow up with this. And then when Martin Luther King came along, many of us was afraid of him and uh, because it was unknown, number one, and we didn't understand how peaceful marching would get it done. Right. I, I, you know, and I, I, I remember coming from totally rejecting a peaceful march to the point where I got to the point where I could see, okay, I see what, I see what this is doing. And I was a kid. And and, and I'm a product of that. And to sit here with you, uh, Solomon, and being in Palestine, uh, being a Palestinian in in Israel and, and, and seeing your generation taking on, like you said, the Gandhi, 
uh, which what many of us black people, including myself, uh, did, and it does work. And we we really have to. And there's a you know I put it like this: in order for anything to grow, something has to break. Mm. You know, the, a seed does not a tree a oak tree does not come out of an oak seed without the seed breaking. Yeah. It does not come through the ground without the ground breaking. Mm. So there's we we have to break something, and that's what you're doing with peace, peace, and and like you just said, love, absolutely put a crack in it, and then our action on top of that brings the plant to full, full, uh, full life. What I want to do now is uh, Jarvis. I want to now when you show that they're not our mics are going to be turned off. Okay, Jarvis is going to show about a few seconds of this trailer that you guys got to check this out. You, got, you this is just so powerful. Tell me when you're running it, Jarvis. Okay, uh, th th this is, you, you know, uh, they have a trailer on YouTube as well that you can see. But this is such a brilliant uh, project, and I just thank you guys so much for, um, are we okay? I thank you so much for coming on. And so tell us a little bit more. Tell us how you got in, uh, involved yeah. in this. Actually, your story, what you just said, is just remind me of uh, what happened with us happening with us right now actually back in Israel Palestine with you know with the hesitation of many people of joining us but that's what we learn one of the principles of nonviolence as uh, they say you know the first they ignore you and then they try to stop you and then they join you and that's what happened with you so this is really a beautiful example of people I know personally also in my community that you know don't you know they say you know they have doubts that nonviolence doesn't work there is like a huge system army what can we do with that and people are scary and all that so i uh, i i i i'm an optimistic person and i do believe on activating you know the goodness in us individually and as a community and as a group and as a human and you know as i hear you speak to me, uh, um about <laughs> People doubting, and like you just said, people doubting uh, peaceful uh, marches or journeys or programs, and and then there are people that is afraid of it. Um, and then, but what keeps you motivated? Yeah, uh, I'm a spiritual person that I do believe. Another video. Uh, I tell you what. What we're going to do is, because this is so important, guys, and I know you, uh, I might not be flowing as well as you may want me to on this because this is so important. So Java is going to show yeah. us a few seconds of another one. Does this one have sound? I think this one's going to have some so this, sound This is it. the trailer. The first so, one was a, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, so this is trailer. Yeah. You guys, watch this trailer. You're going to love this. I mean, it's so powerful. Tell me when you're on, Java. I was four years old when we were attacked on Yom Kippur. I remember us running to the shelter in Tel Aviv. It's very concrete for a child. They want to kill us. And I really didn't understand why do they hate us so much? Nasser, my brother, was younger than me. He was probably 14 years old. The army was attacked on him. I don't know how to deal with this قدرت اتحمل الموقف. كان عندي حلم اني اكون قاتل في صفوف الثوره الفلسطينيه يعني واكون جزء من الكفاح المسلح ضد الاحتلال. كنت مستعد انه اموت في سبيل هاي الافكار. I was admitted into the most prestigious unit in the Israeli army. I was extremely proud. I knew my father was proud. صرت افكر كثير ايش انا دوري في الحياه هون؟ فاخترت اني اعمل عمليه استشهاديه. <تصفيق> زي ما كومم بشوت مرجيش تيرور. كاخا مرجيش تيرور بعيني. 
מישהו התקשר ואמר שיש פלסטינים שמוכנים להיפגש איתנו. كنت أكثر خايف إنه قد يكون في مصيدة يعني هون. We find that we actually have something in common. That willingness to kill people you don't know. عندهم قوة جميلة مش طبيعي. بدي يجي كم واحد من المقاتلين أجل السلام رفضوا الخدمة يغيروها. إذا أنت كريت عن نيلسون مانديلا، آه شخص لحاله غير دولة وغيره كم كم كل الدين وغير كل النظام. وأنت بتعرف إنه شخص لحاله كل شخص لحاله كيف كده يسوي هيك كيف كده يسوي؟ أنا بفقدش الأمل في فكرة إن السلام إنه ما في طريق ثاني غير السلام. So this is so powerful. Speak on that. This experience has been amazing. I mean, when the film came out, we actually, Chaz Ebert is the first one who brought it to the Ebert Fest. And the film had been seen by less than 100 people. And when she saw, she saw it in a group with just 80 people. And as soon as she saw it, she wanted to award it the first Roger Ebert Humanitarian Award. Oh, wow. It brought us over to her, the Ebert Fest. And the film screened for the first time in public to an audience of about 1,500 people. And when the film ended, Everybody was on their feet. It was an unbelievable experience because we knew at that point that the film mattered to people. There's a huge longing out there for a change in what we're creating. So how long, oh Solomon, how long were you involved in this uh, organization before uh, the, 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 uh, the film industry uh, took notice? Uh, I'm uh, one of the founders of the organization. Uh, but I've been in a long journey, you know, you will see my story in the film, so I'm not going to tell you details that exist in the film, but the part that doesn't exist in the film, I'm writing a book with my friend about the, my story and the narrative I grew up with and my Israeli friend's narrative as well, that together, we how we came together. In Simbil, I, I've been active, a peace activist since uh, the time I left out the Israeli jail. But I shifted to nonviolence out of practical experience. You shifted out of nonviolence from, from from arm struggle, what we call in our language, to nonviolence struggle through a hunger strike, food hunger strike in jail. You did a, f a hunger strike in jail a few times, okay. and that time that was Nelson Mandela in jail, uh, actually. And for us Palestinians, Nelson Mandela is also you know like very uh, inspiring personality, and everybody loves him. And he showed us a lot of example of, you know, love and action. And that's love what and action. We do. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I love that. And, you, you know, um, but, you know, when you look at your life story thus far as I see it, and, and now it's, in, um, it's here where the world can see it, and it's here forever on film, that is proof that your work in nonviolence is moving this is proof of it. So those that those that doubt would be able to see uh, where your hard work is getting you and where you're going to take it. Now, the journey that you're on, I mean, I just all the blessings to you. I, my goodness. Yeah. It's an amazing I, group of people. Yeah. I actually, like, you know, we uh, we believe in nonviolence. This is a long journey, and it's a hard choice. And it's, uh, you know, I learned back in the days in jail that uh, victory and the revolution is a small victory. It's not one shift uh, attack like in the war. Mm -hmm. And this enable us, the nonviolence and love and openness and open our heart to bring on board many, many people along the way with us. And we describe it as a train that, you know, in the station, some people jump on and off. Off the train that, station. <laughs> yeah. That's how the revolution works. But you need a few visionary people that see the vision during especially the crisis and the tension time to hold this vision. And that's what combatants will be represent. And that's what the film represent here. And you can see in the film one scene about during Gaza war. That was not easy time 
for us to get along and to get together, while our population, both sides, angry. But we show a, a f confirm and firm commitment to our alliances, both in both sides, to be together. And I believe this is the only way ahead for our cause, to, to leave our comfortable zone, which is challenging, I understand, and to get together and to share uh, to share the life in that piece of land, as you said here as well, you know, everywhere in the world. This is the only way. Everywhere in the world. And, and yeah. you know, it's, it's, it, and I, let me, can I ask you, I, well, I can ask you, you, you don't have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you in jail? Ten years and a half. When I was, I was arrested when I was 14. You was arrested when you were 14. And five months, yes. And you spent 10 years and a half in jail, yeah. and you came out of this such a spiritual, powerful human being. And if I heard you correctly, uh, when you were explaining about the journey and making things happen, that I'm putting in in an in American way, but you, you're saying how important it is to make baby steps and not worry yeah. about the giant leaps. Yeah. Am I, am I, uh, did I hear you correctly? Uh, totally, and even not to worry <laughs> about what we call it the ultimate goal. Yes. It's not logical A, B, C, D. It doesn't work this way, we're human. And, but you know, I would just want to highlight one thing. There are many proofs that nonviolence work. Mm -hmm. One of them, I mentioned the jail of, during the hunger strike, the food hunger strike. Mm. We always succeed to achieve our goals. And that's how I learn about nonviolence. Before I read about Mandela and Gandhi and Martin Luther King and all these respectful people, but uh, two days ago, a daughter of our one of our founders, my brother and good friend, Khen Alon, you will see his story in the film, actually, one of the main people. He's one of the founders of the organization. Your brother is one of the main founders? Uh, not a, f a family brother. Brother in spirit. Israeli brother and the spirit and the comrade. Uh, and he's actually two things. He's teaching and using in a combatant for peace, theater of the oppressed. This maybe need to say it in a different yes, theater accent. Of, no, theater of the oppressed. Yes. Yeah, he learned it in Brazil. Well, that one technique we use. Would you would you would you say that because you understand what he's saying? Yeah, it's theater. It's theater of the oppressed. It, theater of the right. oppressed. Okay. Yes. And we actually have in some of our Q and A's, we have somebody from the theater of the oppressed going to be sp right. speaking with us. And you. also, there is a uh, scene in the film about the, the that technique, which is important to use. And also, his daughter turned out 18 years old a few days ago. And in Israel, everybody go to the army when you became 18 years in old. In Israel, everybody go everybody. to the army when you turn 18. Yes, everybody. She decided consciously to refuse to join the army out of love to the human and to the land and she chose to go to jail and yesterday she was sent to jail by choice and uh, this is the new generation and this is the impact of nonviolence because we need to be unfortunately there is a price to be paid you know, it's so funny when you said that what strikes such a um, chord in my heart is that's what Muhammad Ali did. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, did. And what he's saying, I, 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 I'm, uh, what he's saying, just in case you missed it, uh, his, uh, uh, spirit, his spiritual brother, which is a Jewish young man, uh, daughter turned 18. In Israel, they have to join the military at 18. And this 18-year-old woman decided not to go to the military and she went to jail yesterday yeah she volunteered and just you know went to jail yesterday and what I was saying our hero in that incident was Muhammad Ali when they took all of his fighting rights they took all his took his right to um, make a living mm -hmm. uh, and um, I, I, and he refused to go to jail and, and see and the, here again all of this nonviolent stuff really is it's, it's actually the only way that we can pull this thing yes. together. You wanted to say something? Well, something? I actually want to mention somebody else who's a legendary um, disturber of the peace, as we call them. Please. Which is Jim Larson, who is, he's going to be a, a speaker with us in a Q&A on Sunday. He's somebody who brought the nonviolent techniques from Gandhi to Martin Luther King. Okay. And very few of us even know some of these legendary. Right. Members uh, that that actually changed our history. Oh, what is his name? 
Jim Lawson. Jim Lawson. I, I'm familiar with Jim Lawson. I, um, and he's going to be speaking. At, he is going to be speaking on oh, Sunday. Oh wow! And he, he actually, is that? Um, there he is. Oh yeah, yes. God, I know exactly who you're talking about. I met him several times. Wonderful, wonderful man. Amazing. Wonderful man. Yeah, I haven't met him yet, but just um, you know, you're going to love him. Just a to. beautiful, beautiful spirit. You, uh, Solomon, you wanted to say something there. Uh, you know what? What we're trying to say here, actually, uh, that the joint nonviolent struggle together is totally for the future, for the benefit, for the feelings and belonging of every person around the circle, whether in Middle East or around the world. And as you started this uh, such this interview by talking about the election here, and uh, you know, I I think the need of engagement. And this is what we do. Engaging, of the engagement? Right. Yes, yes. Engaging with each other. There is a huge separation in this country. I can feel it. I can see it. Yes. I have so many American friends from all uh, sides of the map, uh, from even people that I don't agree with, but I keep them in my life, in my spirit, and in my Facebook, if you want. <laughs> and, and, uh, and this is the way how to make the communication today. And uh, I will choose this opportunity to ask uh, people that want to know more about us, to follow us, to go to our Facebook, CombatantsforPeace.org. Go to his Facebook, Combatants for Peace, and, and join in and and yeah. participate. Get out, you know, participate. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, uh, when you talk, excuse me, when we talk about here in America, I have a, a Muslim friend. Uh, I won't call his name. I'm not going to call your name. He's Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad. Uh. Well, he's, um, he he uh, teaches um, science at one of the top universities here. And his family, just such a lovely family. And I, uh, three kids and the baby, and I talked with him the other day, and he had tears in his eyes. Mm -hmm. He said he just can't understand why he's hated by people that don't even know him. And so he was reaching out to me with his yeah. to, to speak to his sons and stuff. And although there was pain, but the mere fact that I, as an African-American man and a Muslim brother, saw fit to ask me and talk to me about what's, what to do or how to manage some of this, that pulls me forward in wanting to get involved even more i have um i go to the jewish synagogue i yeah. I'm, you know i many jewish friend a wonderful rabbi uh abraham chapnick out mm -hmm. there rabbi abraham i had to call your name and so i have lots of muslim friends and and i what you're doing is encouraging me and i hope to encourage more of you to start to sit down and, like uh, Solomon just said, dialogue, start to interact and just start to talk to each and other. you have the opportunity now. Yes. This yeah. election can be seen as an opportunity. Exactly. Right. And that's how I see it, actually. Yes. I, now, now look, that's here's awesome. a man that's from Palestine <laughs> come here and say, our election is a great opportunity for us to start to sit down and talk with each other. Yeah. That is probably one of the most... And, you started this conversation out by you didn't have nothing to say about America. I try. <laughs> I try not to involve, but I can't sit aside. I, what can I do? I'm citizen of the world, man. Even though I'm with one entry visa and, you know, it's always in the trouble. But I'm citizen of the, I care about the people here. I had many you, you, friends. You, you have a lot of love in your heart. He but see, he, here's the thing we cannot forget. Uh, well, let me just start with me. I start at a, at a very young age. And many of my friends, you that I've been blessed enough to travel around the world, you guys know that. And I stopped at about 19 years old, stopped letting people identify me by land mass, uh, social security numbers, phone numbers, a zip code. Mm. We are all on one freaking planet. Yes. You can yeah. try to chop it up in yeah. many ways as you possibly can. Yeah. But we have to survive here. Our common our common home, the one home that none of us can walk away from and leave it behind is this planet Earth. And we are blessed to be on one of look how blessed we are to be on one of the most beautiful planets that's known to man. Thank you. And we all share this planet together. And we cannot 
just sit back. And if, if a child in Palestine is hungry, mm -hmm. then I hurt. Right. If a child in Israel is hungry, then I hurt. But the same thing if yeah. a child in Detroit, Mississippi, yeah. or, or, or Iowa is hungry, then I hurt because we, 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 we are one people on this planet, and this is the thing that we have yeah. to try to preserve. I know I got a little yeah. preacher that would go No, right no, at this film, actually, it's what's amazing. We just got through opening in New York City, and in the last screening that was over there, we had a group of young people from Brooklyn come over, and they live in an environment of violence, and there's a special group that came over. And as soon as the film ended, one of the ones, because we do ask the audience to participate, grabbed the mic and started talking about that it might be a film about Israel-Palestine, but it's very much about his own circumstances. On oh, his own so community, yeah. yes. Yes, we all can identify with this. We, yeah. we can all identify that. with it, you know. Go ahead, Solomon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you just reminded me of my uh, uh, Jewish uh, friend. Uh, I, I assume I'm allowed to mention his name. Like, uh, all uh, peace activist family, that it's my family in California, Lynn and Libby Traubman, they were active during the, uh, the Cold War. During the Soviet really? Union. Yeah, they used to do like Doctors Without Borders between Moscow and Russia. And Doctors the, Without Borders, DC. yeah. And then like they did work in, uh, on Israel, Palestine, bringing Israelis, Palestinians to California. And they worked in Nigeria between Muslim and Christian and really worldwide peace lover people that I really love and I get inspired by them a lot. And once we've been skyping, it was a closure where I live. A and, you know, it, it, and they said, he told me, Sully, you are not free until I'm free. Mm -hmm. And this is really was touching deeply on my heart. And that's what I feel the same for, uh, I mentioned Tamar, Khin's daughter in jail now. And, 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 and all of our prayers should go out and support uh, this young lady for standing up. And because that's, that, that really is what it's all about, is standing for something. I mean, you know, everybody know the old cliche, if you yeah. don't stand for something, you fall for anything. Um, but, you know, you brought up a very good point uh, when you brought in religion because so much of us are divided by religion, especially among uh, the main three religions, Christianity, mm -hmm. Islam, and Judaism. And they all have so much in common. Mm -hmm. they, have, they all have so much in common. And, and they're all brothers and sisters according to the writings, them, the ancient writings themselves. And so for us to be divided uh, under the religion is, 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 to me, is probably one of the most yeah. painful thing. Because coming out of Mississippi, um, it, it was tough for me because black people had a church. And we go to church, the church is so raggedy, we had to hold, take turns holding it up on Sunday. And then I walked by the white church, which was all beautiful and, and the whole bit. But we were persecuted by the, the white group. But then they all went to church, separate church, and prayed to the same same God. Same God. Mm. And it's like, wait a minute, how yeah. is this? What, yeah. what, what, what? How does that make sense? How does, yeah. how does this make sense? Yeah. And Islam and Judaism, they're sons of Abraham. <laughs> my mom's name is Sarah. <laughs> and, yeah, we used to like laugh at uh, my, my mom's neighbor is Hajar. Oh, so, really? Yeah, so we used to like do a jokes about this. Of course, we are from the same yes. roots. You're the frame, same bloodline, the same, the same, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the patriotic mm -hmm. uh, Abraham. Yeah. And so... Even if we find some conversation, I'm of the firm belief that once we understand three things about any individual, then we can start to at least understand them. And that is understanding people, religion, their culture, mm -hmm. and their environment. Yep. Once you understand those three things about a human being, then you can have pretty much a collective yep. conversation about which direction we can go in as a people, but get away from who's right and wrong yeah. so much. So, uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit. The film itself, like I said, it does not have a villain in it. And a lot of times, it, anyway, we're dealing with one of the most uh, contentious kind of stories that we have in the world. 
And so people, what they'll say is that it's very balanced. And the film itself is actually not what we call balanced. It is what, but we don't know it in any other terms. The term that we use is it's integrated. And so there's a line in the film where Avner, who is a soldier, Israeli soldier, will say that when they first met and got together that they actually had something in common, which is the willingness to kill people they don't know. Mm. Wow. And then Shifa, who is a suicide bomber in the Palestinians, uh, said they have something in common, which is the desire for peace. And so once we start accepting that, that we have both of those inside of us, the ability to kill and the ability to love and the desire yeah. for peace, that we no longer have to create the enemy outside of us. And, you know, and so and I was ha talking with a friend today, you know, see, people are in pain. People are suffering. Yes. And, and so we put very high expectations on people that is already in pain and suffering and that is drowning in their own emotion, that is drowning in their own pain. So if a person is drowning in their, in their own emotion and drowning in their own pain, I can't expect for them to swim and save me. Mm -hmm. So I, that means I have to look inside me. And, you know, one of the best stories I can tell you, Bobby, don't jump on me. My brother, uh, the, the best thing that happened to my life, uh, and my baby brother, uh, where well, he's, uh, don't get carried away with this, Bobby. But Bobby is Islam, and I practice Judaism. And we grew up in the same household. Yeah. Hmm. And, 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 and we have the best relationship and conversations about this. I, I, you would love to be on the, other, on, on the other phone and listen to my brother and I because we both study uh, these religions pretty, pretty, pretty well. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and we, it, 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 it is just something that I know it can be done. And I know that we can come together on common ground because what I don't do with my brother... I don't make him wrong, and I don't make me right, mm -hmm. and he the yeah. same. It's to get away from the right and wrong and just listen, the yeah. power of listening to each other. Yes. We have about five minutes. This is going by too fast. <laughs> uh, but it's, it, it really is the power of listening to each other. Have you found that to be a good thing? Oh yeah, uh, in our uh, dialogue meetings, actually, and this is typical for Israelis, Palestinians, and like as you said, mentioned here, your brother, and it's typical for many other groups that I've been in my life, interfaith groups or in a conflict groups especially. They always attempt to blame the other side and to victimize yourself, and that you want your story to be heard from the other side. And it's always started with blaming. Yes. We are very good in blaming each other. Making people wrong. <laughs> totally. <laughs> But I came to believe through years of experience, I, play, I know Hebrew and I, I'm Palestinian, I know Arabic, of course, so I know Hebrew, so I play a lot of uh, the bridge. You build bring, a bridge there. To bring our peoples together and from different divides. And uh, we should give everybody like the respect and the honor to their stories and to their uh, sacrificing and their victimhood. I, what I don't believe and what I do advocate for in our, for our people especially, that feel so much victimhood yes. mindset, uh, yes. which is negative for me, yes. that to transform our anger into non-violence action and into action and not to sit aside and to feel powerless and victimhood. Yeah, victimhood I, is just a negative yeah, yeah, thing I, to I, be. For the sake of time, I had to, because I, yeah. as an African-American male, I can identify with that. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. strong, feeling yeah. like a victim, and until you stop feeling like a victim, you can't find your power. Exactly. And you find your power after you become less than a victim and someone that's taken in control of yourself. Exactly. Uh, before we go, I'd like to end the show with, I can't believe how fast, you guys got to come back. Mm, I you. can't believe how fast this has gone. Um, we like to end the show with everybody just giving a, just a quick words of wisdom to close the show. Uh, Solomon, starting with you, just give the audience just a quick words of wisdom to walk away with. Yeah, I'm still learning though. You know, I was reading yesterday that what we're doing now, and I was reading this from uh, Gandhi, said, what we're doing now is not going to fix the bust. Mm. The bust happened. We just learn about it. <laughs> and we need to learn about each other bust. But we are fixing today for for better future for mm. our kids yeah. from all sides. Yes. And please give us a word. What I would say, say is that it's easy to love people that love you. But oh, I love that. When you try yeah. to really love people that hate you, 
that's when you know how loving you really are. And hate, mm. whether you hate the ones that hate, it's still hate. Yes. So staying in that energy. You thank know, you. I, I thank you guys so much. I, I can't you. tell you, and this show has gone by so fast, and I know I'm down it's to the last great. second thank job. Thank you. Well, let, let, let me say that I didn't put any words together. You know, from a spiritual point of view, when you build a bridge, you generally build a bridge so that others can cross, not just yourself. When you build a highway, you don't build a highway just for yourself. You build the highway so that others can travel along that highway. As we learn to grow in love and spirit and understanding each other, let's build highways for the future, not just for self, but for many generations to come that they can cross that bridge and they can travel that highway. Remember, Beautiful. nation can rise, a nation can rise no higher than it elevates this woman. This is Larry X. I see you next week. Thank you. Thanks. Larry.